spoiler alert, we're fine, our animals are fine, we've moved back home, our area has been downgraded back to level one evacuation, and the red zones that are nearby, the go now zones, are getting a little smaller. Most of these clips are from the second day back after our initial evacuation. We had moved the animals we could and the sentimental items we most wanted and were coming back to check on animals left behind and to pick up some practical and or expensive items that would otherwise be very replaceable. Some people out there might be wondering how I managed to shoot any video at all during an evacuation. How would I have time to do that? For the most part, I wore a harness that the camera could mount to so I could keep both hands free to do all the things that I really needed to get done. All right, it's the next day after we evacuated for potential fire. Our house is still in the yellow zone, not the red, so we've come back to get a few more things, look, at, look after some of our animals that were left behind. Let's take a quick look and see how my idea with the hose to create a mud puddle for the chickens is doing. This is pretty cool. We used what had been a problem as a solution. Here's a reference clip about how we were trying to keep water out of our chicken run. Let's talk a little bit about why I'm putting the roof up. It goes back to when we first built the chicken coop. We were very concerned about predators and with valid reason, if you've been watching our videos this year, 2020, you'll know we lost an awful lot of chickens and a couple of turkeys to a raccoon when we were uh, growing them out in the Mini Cooper. With the, uh, with the chicken run when we built it, we buried some really substantial... Let me go inside so you can see. When we built the chicken run, we buried some really substantial beams significantly down into the ground to, uh, to completely deter any predator from being able to dig under and get into here to get our chickens. And it's been great for that, but unfortunately, when it rains, when it rains a lot, this whole sloping area just becomes a big swimming pool mud hole which isn't which isn't great for our chickens my first solution to try and fix that problem completely didn't work i don't know if you can see that but i drilled a hole here to try and just let water drain through and out and run down the hill but that hole was just constantly getting clogged with muck and debris and I'd clear it out and it would drain for a little bit but then clog back up and even when I just continuously really kept it clean, uh, clear so that stuff would drain out I would just get this mucky slime trail going right down the walking path which is exactly where we wouldn't want that so another problem <laughs> trying to solve a problem but like I said that hole really isn't uh, 
draining the chicken run like we wanted to so I'm hoping the roof will be the answer to this problem that hole certainly wasn't doing the job if we just keep all the excess water out then it won't be a big um, big muddy mess for them as you can see we've got a small standing water mud puddle here that seems to be just about right for uh, that seems to be just about right for what we were trying to do it had been ridiculous overkill how much extra chicken food I ended up putting into the chicken run I didn't need to do that much on the third day back from the initial evacuation I ended up taking about a third of it out just the stuff, just the food that was left in the garbage cans that I could tip back up and, and put back into storage. That brings up an interesting point. What would I do differently now, looking back? Besides the chicken food, I think it really would have been a good idea to have on hand an extra battery for my leaf blower that was one of the most frustrating things trying to blow all that storm debris away from the house so that it wouldn't be as as much of a fire danger and having to constantly stop to recharge the one battery that I did have the leaf blower really was one of the most useful tools during this whole experience Also would have moved the gas cans and the camping stove propane tanks a little sooner than I did I didn't even think about that on the very first day for some reason really it would have been nice to have had some sort of a trailer that we could put all of our goats in but that's kind of a big ticket item that isn't really in the cards for us right now we don't even own a vehicle capable of towing something like that. Dad just texted, he asks if uh, he wants us to, uh, he wants him to unload the rabbits from the back of his pickup truck and come over to pick up some of the bigger items. Might as well. Yeah, if, if you have stuff that you want him to move, then yeah, but don't do it because I have stuff to move because I don't, I can't even figure out what I should do. I feel like I should just leave a lot of stuff because it's going to be a yeah. ridiculous amount of hassle to move it back and forth. Except for the thousands of dollars <laughs> invested in it. But you're right. Hopefully it's for, all it, for nothing. It's, you know, the way I'm looking at it is if we have to start over, it's I'm going to 
you know, it's going to be fine because we're going to be worried about getting into a house that we're probably going to have to rent somewhere for a while and then it's going to be, and then we'll have to pack ourselves into this tiny little place if we have all our stuff. You know what I'm saying? We need to have essential things. Essential and expensive. That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> oh, I just thought of something. I'm giving Dad a call. I'm not just going to text this. On that second day, Dad had come back out with his truck so we could get some of the bulky, expensive tools and a few other things. So thank you very much, Dad. He also helped me scoop up a lot of that storm debris into the yard debris bin so we could move it off and away from the house. So I get mild vision. Let's be interesting. Dusk and dawn. My eyes fight for dominancy. Mm. You know? And what's really interesting is uh, on the smoke and stuff, because of haze. So I, had to, I put in my right contacts. So my vision is just distance. Oh. But it's amazing me. Dusk and dawn. It's like both eyes are trying to compete for what I want to see. Mm -hmm. And so I said, you know, and I noticed it yesterday. So I said, I just put a right contact in today to be able to not have this kind of weird feeling. Yeah, so, feel, feel free to move it as close as you want. There's going to be a lot of stuff. Did somebody come across or anybody says, what is the station you should listen to? What is... No, I haven't seen a, uh, anybody in person that has given us any warnings yet. Just the phone. These uh, these cedar branches are incredibly flammable. Oh, God. Yeah, I, I love using them when I want to start a fire. I wonder how we're going to do this. <laughs> yeah. A lot of it is just going to end up being blown into the yard. But the point is, it doesn't need to be fuel right here. Yeah. What made this fire so dangerous is what caused all this debris, the high winds. All right, I can probably blow the rest. Yeah.
wasn't exactly a glamorous task, but it was necessary. We had both of our cars, and Wendy, just the day before, had moved four goats in her little car. So you can imagine what the floor of that car looked like. We simply had to clean it out before we put more stuff in. I thought you had more cardboard down than you did. I didn't realize I have anything. Yeah. I didn't have anything here. There was nothing I could do. That's all right. That's all right. And I had people coming, and I needed to get them in and have them. Yep. Yep. Um, I, I, can we use your shop back? Is that here? The shop back is here. We can could try we, that. Could we try that? Yep. Um, yeah, if and we I can get put some the, of the big stuff down, then I might be able to scrub it with some of my my rags that I use for indigo. And okay, things. I'll use the shop shop vac, and uh, and we're still still could use the tarp if you under wanted. Stuff? It was throw it away. All right. <clears throat> it's just gonna be disgusting. I'm not gonna be able to use it because it will freak me out. <laughs> she changed her water. We should put it in the shelter. Yeah. Can you grab one? I don't know why you put all these in there. <laughs> More than the turkey could drink in a month. Can you open the door, please? <laughs> um, right when you go to leave. We should turn the electric fence off. Right, let's dump this on the deck. Get some use out of it. Oh. Oh, I'm used to dumping it there so the electricity. I turned this off yesterday. Okay. I probably should have turned it off the day before. Alright. You want to do this? I'll uh, get the shot yeah. back. Yeah, for the car. Okay. and poop out of my car. I had four goats in here for about three hours. <laughs> two bucks with two does and they made a mess. Yeah. Yeah and and Rogue took a nap for about an hour and a half so she wallowed in it because she rolls and snores when she sleeps. Or not voiceover but that is gross. Yeah. Look at show the camera that just a few swipes. Yep. I'll leave you to it. Yeah, I'm actually going to probably have to get a hose over here. Alright, so this tree here is kind of a small scraggly one that we're going to get rid of anyways. And it's actually reaching up and over the roof. Not good in a potential fire situation. So I'm going to try and take it down. I've got an electric chainsaw. Unfortunately, the blade is pretty dull. So we'll see if I can make it happen. There's some smaller strands of the tree that I'll take out with a uh, loppers or maybe a handsaw. Hopefully it'll work. I have turned off power to the electric fence already.
explain what happened? So, last night when Brian was leaving, one of the last things he was doing was getting our quail. And um, he, he was turning things off and I was ha telling him how to get it ready and the incubator was still on and I had this horrible vision of little newborn chicks hatching only to burn in a fiery styrofoam inferno and so I told him to turn the incubator off but and I didn't look this morning to see I just was like that's something I have to clean up <laughs> but I was down there and I looked in and there's a tiny chick that was laying and I thought it was dead but I turned the incubator on just in case it's peeping hmm. so Good. We'll see if that chick survives and maybe there might be some other chicks. It, it was still very humid and warm in there. It's about 90, 97 degrees maybe. So um, that's still pretty low for the chick, but we'll see if we can't revive it. And, but it's <laughs> <Good>. remarkable because <laughs> it probably was born yesterday and has survived all this time. Explain just what happened with your car. No, oh. I think when I put some things in there, it locked and my purse with my keys were in there so that they would be ready to go. I'm going to take the keys out now and put them in my pocket. Thank God I happened to have brought my set of Wendy's keys. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't usually have them with me, so. Yeah, that would have been really bad. So we're trying to get prepared and I don't want to just leave this milk to rot in the house, so <laughs> I'm making cheese and I'm putting some in the freezer because we, we just don't know if we're going to be back soon. And so this is my way of kind of coping. Don't want to make the, let the milk go bad. <laughs> well, we're drying indigo off, so this is the last milk I have, so I'm, yeah. So I'm all about it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, we just watched the news and they had a special report from the fire chiefs and, and the incident commander guy that they have up there working on it or somebody who works for him I think is who it really was and so um, things are looking a lot better today and we had noticed it ourselves that it seemed less smoky the weather's a lot cooler. It was cold this morning. Um, We're and right now I'm I'm not, I feel like I could put a, a sweat jacket on even, so. Um, We're it, still in level two. Yeah. And we're still just a few blocks away from the, the go now red alert level three, but um, it's not getting worse. And that's a good thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, now, when we took the rabbits yesterday, I put some of the rabbits in little pet carriers because that was all I had. Um, and so I couldn't get George to come out of his cage. And so that's why George got, George got to stay. <laughs> yeah. um, but today we were, we were hoping to take him over to Brian's dad's, but I think because the other rabbits are in pet carriers, I'm going to put George back and bring this over to Brian's dad so we can get some of those rabbits that are in pet carriers out. A little out. more room. Yeah, so they're not, and so they're not sitting in their poop and urine and mm -hmm. stuff because it's not good. Um, I, I could only get one of these. I, I ordered two and only one came. So um, Brian went and picked it up from Wilco today, and. Yeah, so we're <laughs> we're doing the best we can <laughs> trying to figure this out. Actually, we feel pretty good. We just took a couple of showers. Yeah. And uh, it's nice. Yeah. After two really long days of <laughs> packing stuff up and clearing flammables out from around the house and. Yep. Yeah. What are they saying about your turkey post? Ashley says, so glad to hear it's at level two and not at three. Hopefully it'll all regress soon. Everyone is safe and happy. And Susan says, so glad you're safe. All right. And I've got my 
this monkey lives on mine. <laughs> now, do you have that warm towel for the baby quail? I'm worried she's not going to live because she's not doing very well. She's just laying there. She hatched late. Well, I don't know if she hatched late so much as she hatched after we turned the incubator off because we were evacuating. So, I need to get the warm towels. I have warm towels that I've been running the um, dryer. So, they're in the dryer right now in a little box. So, we're going to put her in that because I'm worried that this incubator is full of water in the bottom and it's going to slosh around the car and she's going to get wet in there and it's not and she's just going right into the yeah. uh with the others anyways yeah yeah the so, brooder. and i'm going to put her in a tiny box so that she hopefully stays warm enough just for the short car ride do a little camera closer oh poor baby she's not doing very good yeah this might not be a good survival candidate but we'll see yeah I didn't even know how to go in through the garage. I've got the secret code. Bunnies. You like your temporary home? Your right here. That's uh, <laughs> they're both. You'll probably want to go back in with your buddies soon. This is hard to do with this angle. There we go. Yeah, why's this baby out? Tell you to go back in there. There you go. Her poop poops are getting all over. Let's grab um, this Clifford here. Let's move Clifford to over there, so we've got like a bunny aisle. And just flip it around so the door is opening. All right, so hot.
What do you think? Uh, it could be one cage better. <laughs> Bunnies. <laughs> they're starting to hop and their wings are flopping. Oh. I mean, they just, they're, it's, they're like, every now and then, they just go. They're starting to get a little uh, motions. You know, really motions in boom, there. boom, you know, a couple times they go this way and that way. They're ground birds, so they, what they do is they kind of hide and then when they're startled, they pop up. That's kind of their defense mechanism. Oh, pop when, up? When they're, well, these, uh, these are, when these, they're older. They look like they lop, you know, I mean, they, they, they lop, they, like they leap forward and they, they leap and flop or, you know, their, their uh, wings, really cute. And it's actually, I think a lot of the smell comes from the food. Mm, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I tried it, it's really isn't that good. <laughs> Since then, we've gotten all the animals back to our place, except for the goats. We did just go visit the goats. So stay tuned for an episode where we go have a nice conversation about goats with Ashley up at their farm in Washington State.